Can we celebrate Jesus this morning? Praise the Lord. Can we celebrate his goodness, his love, his truth, and his mercy that endure forever. The spirit of God in me is the spirit of God in you. Welcome, amen, to Grafton Chapel Church of God, amen, virtual youth service, amen. The youth were in action and they're going to continue to be in action. And we just want you to know, every youth that's watching the broadcast, that God will take care of you. Amen. We look at a time and everybody's afraid and concerned about many things in this world. Right now it's the pandemic, it's coming into the schools, it's, it's, it's coming in places that you wouldn't think. Places that you'd be considered safe is getting into, like the hospitals and, and such like. And it makes you wonder what is the future will hold. But the great news is that God holds the future. Yeah. And he holds it yeah, in his hand. Yeah. I'm holding this microphone in my hand right now. And I can manage it. <laughs> But after a while, as time goes on, it's going to be tiring for me. So I'm going to have to switch hands to hold it. But God having the world in his hands, he doesn't switch on you. He can balance things. True balance comes from knowing God as your personal Savior. That's where hope is. That's where it rests. And if you trust God with all your heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. If in all of your ways you acknowledge him, loved ones, he, he will. will direct your path. You can't go wrong. You'll never get lost. He is the ultimate GPS for your life. Amen. Follow him. Follow his leaders. And the best is yet to come. And the best will come in your life. I'm going to be praying for you, the young people of this nation. I'm going to be praying for the, the young people who are struggling, who are going through. Parents, you may be having a rough time with your children. Grandparents, you may be raising your grandkids and you having a rough time. Don't give up on hope. You may have given up on your children, your grandchildren, but don't give up on hope because hope lies in the hands of Almighty God. I'm going to be calling our youth director to come alongside of me, our lady Sandra, as I pray. Make contact with somebody if you can. And if you can't be, if you're not in a position to make some contact with somebody, just put your hand on your heart. Right where you are. Yes. Amen. God will take care of you. Every day, along this way, I repeat, God will take care of you. Our Savior, we come before you right now because we need you now more than ever. Father, we come specifically on behalf of the succeeding generation your young people, your children, your sons, and your daughters. Father, it's a rough time for them right now because the world has shifted. They can't meet up with their friends, Lord. They, they don't have the freedoms and the luxuries that they once had. They're, they're in a class, Lord, but they have to be staying in that one class. They're learning at a different speed, oh God, because the curriculum has to be more than ever before. And they're ever writing, ever typing, and learning is a challenge to keep up with the demands. It's causing anxiety, Lord. It's causing stress. It's causing fear of the unknown. And it's unsettling. But dear God, you are God before this pandemic. Precious Savior, your God within this pandemic. Oh God, and by the power of your grace divine, you are God even after this pandemic. So we know that we are secure in you. Secure every mind that is wavering. Secure every thought, oh God, that goes against your will. Put in the hearts of your young people 
that they can make it, even though their lives may be broken, even though their hearts may be broken, even though their dreams may be shattered, even though their expectations have yet to be met. Father God, comfort them right now and put in their spirits that you will take care of them. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Clap your hands for victory. Right now. We are a ministry that loves the Lord and loves young people and spent the last 20 years pouring into the lives of young people because we believe that young people are the future and preparing for the future starts today. Amen. We want you to know that we are here for you. Feel free at the end of the broadcast, amen, to, to write down our email address and our address and such like and our phone numbers and we will be in touch with you. At this time, one of our shining stars is gonna come along and introduce the speaker, our sister Petrina, in Jesus' name. Grand Rising, everybody. Welcome to Brampton Triumphant's first virtual youth Sunday. We are a bunch of young people who love God and are grateful that he loves us. Coming to deliver God's word to his people is one of us, a young man who is passionate about God and believes that purpose cannot die. Please welcome into your hearts the ministry of Brother A.J. K. Walker. Good morning, Brampton Triumphant Church of God and viewers tuning in via social media. It is a privilege and an honor to be back on a pulpit that it was so hard to believe I'd return to after all that has happened dating back to earlier on this year. But through God's grace, we are brought back together in his house. Amen. 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 Kindly turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah 41, verse 10. And the scripture says, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Today, I will be ministering on a theme entitled, God will take care of you. Amen. God will take care of you. A common problem faced not only as young people, but in the human race as a whole, is a single state of mind. And that state is called fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what we do. Fear of what we think we can't do. Fear of what we think is impossible for us. Fear is described as an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain, or is a threat. It is described as an emotion brought about all because we believe that something may be dangerous or threatening. We may fear failure, as it's a threat to our pride and our dignity. We may fear the spotlight, as we fear that it may shift the way people think of us and ruin their good outlooks on us. I'm talking about fear. As one of the more powerful emotions, it can often take control of us, like how anger and rage make us lash out and often make rash decisions and cause pain to other people. How sadness makes us dreary and quiet and makes us bring forth tears and has a searching for something to take us out of the darkness. How happiness has us all bubbly and junky and makes us feel as though the world is doing its job right and makes us 
but to do good deeds as a result. However, among these other emotions which I have listed, we are still rather mobile and feel the desire for something. Fear is crippling. Yeah. Yeah. Fear is immobilizing. Fear is devastating. And can take you from being the brightest blooming flower to the stillest vegetable. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come You're on. once jumping for joy and thinking about all the good in this world. But now you're reduced to being, as it were, a statue. And the only movement you have is trembling Come and on. rapid shaking. I'm talking about fear. fear. Yes, sir. Second mm. Timothy 1 verse 7 says that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, meaning that fear is a direct attack to mankind from him. Come on. See, fear will render you unable, but God is the enabler, Amen. and God will take care of you. Yes. The fear will forcefully make you plateau, rooted and grounded in the earth, but God will bring you to the stratosphere. Come on. Fear will make you feel as though you were on death row, awaiting execution. But the righteous judge in God the Father will declare, yes. case dismissed, Hallelujah. saved by grace. Yes. God will Amen. take care of you. Thank Come you, on. Jesus. Hallelujah. I've said that God will take care of you. And I've said that he will save you. By grace. Yeah. Yes. But who exactly is this God? Come on. How do we know that this God will take care of us? Well, let me tell you, saints, this is not just any God that we're dealing with. Come on. This is the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, Jacob. and Jacob. Come on, A lineage, a legacy, generations that benefited from the presence and the blessings mm. of this very God in their lives. The blessings upon their lives are the same blessings that are upon our lives. Yes. The same source, the same resource, mm -hmm. the same force yes. to keep us on course. Amen. Come on, come on, hallelujah. The dictionary defines this God as the creator and ruler of the universe, source of all moral authority, mm -hmm. and the supreme being. He is the God of many names, beginning with Yahweh, the Hebrew name of God, which means he who makes that which has been made, All right. or he brings into existence whatever exists. This very name is said to have been regarded by Jews as too sacred to be spoken of, yeah. and defines God as the creator of all things created. <laughs> This definition is backed by the words of John 1 verse 3, which says that all things were made by him, mm -hmm. and without him was not anything made that was made. Come on, yes, sir. preach it. The name Jehovah Rapha uses the Hebrew word Rapha, which means to restore and to heal. Mm. Coming together, Jehovah Rapha deems our Lord as the God who heals. Mm -hmm. We have proof of God being a healing God when he is shown to have healed Job from the sores and boils that had covered him from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet. The very textbook definition of this God says he's the source of all moral authority, meaning that the God we serve is all things moralistic. He is all things right. Mm -hmm. He is all things true. Yes. Yes. And he is all things good. Yes, Come on. sir. Yes. We know the names and the description for the names of the God we serve. But let's get familiar with this God as he has proven himself to be. This God says to us in John 14, verse 18, that I will not leave you comfortless. Come on. This is a comforting God yes, who declares himself he will not leave you without comfort. He will not leave you in a situation of distress, any situation in which you would be lacking 
or in me. He also says in Hebrews 13, verse 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, declaring that this God is bound to us in loyalty yeah. and in love. Yes. Come on. The same God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, yes. that whosoever believes in him will not, not perish, perish. Not perish, but have everlasting Hallelujah. life. God will yes, take care of you. Thank you, Jesus. The verse that follows this, being John 3, verse 17, says that God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We can see clearly that this is an everlasting God who will never run out or run short. Come on, sir. We can see clearly Ooh, yes. that this God is yes. a loving Savior. Uh -huh. A Savior who will not leave us in dire situations. Yes, sir. A God who will comfort us in our times of distress. Yes, sir. And a God who will never turn his back on. on his children. Preach God this gospel. will take, take care of Preach this Come gospel. On. Preach this gospel, sir. Now there comes a time in all our lives when fear seems to overcome us. Wow. And we need to be saved by grace. Yeah. And there's a passage taken from the book of Judges chapter 6, verses 11 to 16, in which fear had shaken the land, and the Israelites were in need of grace. Wow. Come on. The passage reads, and there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak which was in Ophir, that pertained unto Josh the Abiezrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of God. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, then why then has all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of sin? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Oh, go ahead. But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel you, as one man. <laughs> have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, All right. and thou shalt smite the men. Amen. Now, the reason why it was needed for Gideon to save Israel was because the Israelites had begun doing evil in God's sight of them. So the Lord had punished them for their evil by placing them under the domination of Midian for seven years. It became so bad that the Israelites had to make hideouts in caves and mountains and strongholds. And when they planted crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the Easterners came upon them and set up their camp in their land and destroyed all their crops until they reached Gaza, which is an estimated 68 to 76 kilometers of destroyed crops. And they left absolutely no sustenance for Israel. No sheep, no oxen, no donkeys, no bull. The Midianites came with their cattle and tents, invading as though they were swarms of locusts, until both they and their camels were without number, entering into the land to destroy it, leaving the Israelites utterly impoverished. At times, you may feel as though you are alone. Mm. The odds are stacked against you. Get you. Come on. Sometimes it would appear that mm. you're completely out a waste to go. Come on, preacher. Your back is against the wall, mm -hmm. Come on. and that very wall mm -hmm. is crumbling right behind you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looked as if there was no help for uh -huh. the Israelites. It looked like the God of Israel, who delivered them into the promised land, 
promises. had left yeah. with no promises yeah. coming All right. That's simply what the enemy wants you to think. Yeah. You see, it does not matter how many issues swarm you. That's it right. does not matter the dire situation you appear to be in. Come on now. It does not matter the sickness that yeah. floods the uh -huh. Saints, yes. you are mighty men and women. Hallelujah. And I declare to you today that yes. God will yes. take care of you. Hallelujah. Can you give some praise to the yes. God in front of you? Lift up your hands to this God. Declare to the enemy that God will take care of you. Yes. I got nothing to worry yes. about. Because God will take care of you. You can't scare me, yes. devil, because God will take care of you. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the word. Now, after Jesus, Jesus. was told by God that he would deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Midians, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he had blown a trumpet, summoning the Abhazites to follow him. He had also sent out messengers through Madison, calling them to arms, and also into Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, so that they too went up to meet him. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, I will place a wolf fleece on their threshold. If there is only dew on the fleece, and all the ground around it is dry, then I will know I will that you will save you Israel will Come on. by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next morning. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, which came up to be a bowl full of water. Oh. This was a testament. Yeah to God's unbreakable promise. Hallelujah. And proof yeah. that Gideon would take, that God would yeah. take care of Gideon yeah. and Absolutely. all those who follow. Yeah. Gideon and his men began to camp at the spring of Herod. And the Lord told Gideon that the number of men that he had were too many. Too many. And that if they would have the Midianites given into their hands, they would boast against God, saying, mm. My own hand hath saved me. Mm -hmm. See, we, we gotta shake off the idea mm. that we are anything on our own. Mm. Come we on, gotta come shake on. the thought yes, that sir. we can make it alone. Come because on. sometimes that's exactly what is prohibiting us yep. from receiving Woo! the righteous Lord, We tell my ourselves, life. I don't need anybody else. But you've got to have the Savior with you at all times. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Now, Gideon went to the multitude of people and spoke unto them, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him return early and depart from Gideon. Now, after this statement was made, 20,000 of his men left, uh -huh. and there were only 12,000 left. Uh -huh. You see, we've got to let go of the fear that overtakes us. We have to let go of the fear that is weighing us down, mm. and it's making us unable to move Come on. in the will of God. Yes. We've got to let go of that sinking thinking and allow hope to float. Yeah. We've got to let go and let go. Come on. Amen. Amen. Jesus. When those who had fear in their hearts had left, God told Gideon that he still had too many men uh -huh. and told them to told, God, told Gideon to take them down to the water, uh -huh. and said that he would tell Gideon who would go with him and who would not. He was told to separate those who put their faces into the water and drank like dogs, uh -huh. and keep them apart from those who picked up the water with their hands and drank from their hands. See, those who drank with their hands, rather than plunging face first uh -huh. into the water, we're more prepared for the warfare to come on. rather than those who have their <laughs> faces right. clenched and right. not on the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, Let sir. Let me tell you, loved ones, that's that we must right. at all times be prepared come for on. warfare. All yes. right. We must at all times be prepared for the trials that's and tribulations right. that are to come. Come on, on sir. And in order to prepare ourselves for battle, at all times we must have faith and not fear. Come on. We must be cautious, yes. but not anxious. Right. We must be ready, 
Yes. But not rattled. Come on. Come on. Out of the 12,000 men that were left, only 300 oh, had drunk of their hands. Yeah. Only because they were men does not mean they are all persistent. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told Gideon that by the 300 men, that God would save Israel. I will do it. And later on, all the men went into their tents. Mm. That same night, God told Gideon to go into the camp of the Midianites and said that if he was fearful to go, to bring his servant pure and told him that when he goes down, he would hear the things that the Midianites would say. <laughs> and by hearing it, oh, yeah. he would be And when Gideon had gone down, he saw that the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the Eastmanites had camels that had a number as large as there were sand by the seaside. Mm. While Gideon was in the camp of the Midianites, he heard a man telling his friend a dream. And he said, mm. I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread mm. tumbled into the host of Midian mm. and came to a tent and smote it that it fell mm. and overturned it that it lay along. And a friend told him, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, mm. the son of Joash, mm -hmm. a man of Israel. Mm -hmm. For into his hand uh -huh. have God delivered me yeah. and all the host. Saints, there are some times we have to step out of our comfort zone. Come on. We Come must on. step out into enemy territory, yeah. yes. knowing that God's almighty care is always oh, right back yes. there. At the very moment yes. that Gideon heard those words, he worshipped God yes. and ran his way back to the camp where his men were, telling them to get up, for God had delivered Midian into their hands. You see, we have to move with the expectation that God is going to do something. Yes. We may not have, have everything ready yet, but you have to know that God has everything ready before you. Come on. For his thoughts are higher than our yeah. thoughts. Come on, and his sure. ways Come are on. higher than our ways. Uh -huh. mm. Gideon divided these men into three companies, 100 in each of them, putting a trumpet in each of their hands yeah. and pitchers with torches inside them. He told the men to watch what he did and to do the same. And that when he and all those that were with him blew their trumpets, that they are to do the same. And shout, saying, the sword of the Lord yep. and of Gideon. Mm. When Gideon and his men blew the trumpets, the other men did the same. And broke the pitchers and ran into the camp of the Midianites with the trumpet in their right hand and torches in their left. Shouting out, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now, I want somebody to shout this phrase, but I want you to make this personal. I want you to shout and say, the sword and the Lord and of Gideon. However, I want you to replace Gideon's name with that of your own. Mm -hmm. The sword of the Lord yeah. and of? John. The sword of the Lord, O'Neill. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. John. Amen. Now, when the trumpets had sounded, God caused the Midianites to turn against him. Yeah. and wage war on themselves <laughs> from the inside. Mm. Oh and when they God. tried to flee, oh Gideon sent messengers to wow. call the other Israelites wow. to corner them that they would not escape. Wow. Come on. Wow. Because of this one man named Gideon, mm. who had complete and total faith in God, mm. he was able to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Midian after seven long years uh -huh. of domination. Mm -hmm. Can somebody give God praise uh -huh. for the Lord? Can somebody shout to this God? Can you all give praises to the God who will take care yes, of you? Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, he will. Thank Mother you, Lord. Lord. Thank you. God will take care of you. Thank you, Jesus. But in order to receive such care, Thank you. you've got to have faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God will take care of you, but you need the access yeah of faith. Faith is your health card to get access to the great position. Yes. 
faith is the benefit card mm -hmm. that is given to you by you who brought you out of darkness Come and into marvelous. Hallelujah. Faith operates as a passport yes. that takes you on a journey to places you have been Woo! before yes. and gives you access to places you have never been before. Yes. You must believe that God will yeah. take care yeah. of you. Yeah. You yeah. must believe that in your times of desperation, yeah. that someone is right behind you. Yeah. You must believe in your times of despair, yeah. that you've got somebody with you. Yeah. When you are down to nothing, yeah. you must believe that God is up yeah. to something. Yeah. When you don't have any idea yes. what to do, you must believe God. that God has a plan. Hallelujah. When you have no clue mm. how to get out of something, you must believe that God will get you out of it. Mm. You may be saying, my God, it's too high. Mm. Yes. I can't get over it. Mm -hmm. You may be saying, it's too low. Mm. I can't, I can't get over it. Come on. It's too wide. Ah. I can't get around it. Hey. It seems you've got to remember that he's able. Come on. And if you can't maneuver your way around it, you've got to go right through yes. it. Come on. Come on. You can't get over it, you go right through it. Come on. Come you can't get around it, you go right through it. Come you can't get under it. Go right through it. Come on. God will carry you through. And God will take care of you. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. My brothers ah. and sisters, yeah, preaching. I've stressed that we must not fear. Mm -hmm. Instead, have faith. Mm -hmm. Fear is the direct enemy of faith. Fear is the polar opposite of faith. Face faith is the complete belief and trust in the highest power. Mm. However, fear is the ultimate doubt in all things helpful and hopeful. Mm. Faith is the step right into God. Come on. But fear is the step down into the clutches of the enemy. Yeah. Come on. Faith is a hold on the promises of God. Mm -hmm. But fear oh. is the hold on the mind. Mm. Presenting that nothing can. Fear, fear, fear. Yeah. I'm talking about oh, fear. Mm. You see, fear will have you wound tight. Mm. Fear will have you locked up in the mental facility that is your mind. Mm. Wound up and wound tight as though you were in a straitjacket. The spirit of fear will buckle you up and cling to you as though you were in a bear's grip. It will grip you like the rope you're playing tug of war with. But it feels like no one else is tugging on the other side of the rope. And it's just tugging and tugging and tugging. You see, saints, fear will have you restricted. But let me reestablish something. Come there. on. Allow me to jog your memory. Fear would like to have you restricted. <laughs> but who the Son of Man sets free hey! is free indeed. Yes. Fear would have you believe that you are in a battle with something so much greater than you. Come on. Fear will convince you that there is no way out. Fear would make you feel like there are chains holding you back. But remember that God is the way maker, the chain breaker, and the caretaker. Come God on. will yeah. take Come care on. of you. Hallelujah. Now love this. You may be asking, why do we need care? What is the reason for us to need care? What is such a danger to me? that I need care. Well, I'm going to tell you. First Peter 5, verse 7 says, to cast all your care all your cares, him, for he careth for you. for you. Saints, if we are not casting our cares, we're holding on to them. If we are not casting them, mm. we are keeping them. When we keep fear, it allows the enemy to write a script about us with an unhappy ending. When we are in the earth and we do not cast our cares to the Lord, we are left alone and guideless in the devil's playground. And when the devil tags you, you're it. <laughs> when the devil tags us like he did you, sickness floods mm. us. When the devil tags us, we have nowhere to rest but the bed of affliction. When the devil tags us, we are left in a world of eternal darkness, with nowhere to go, nowhere to run, and nowhere to escape to. When we don't have the Lord's care, we are walking alone when the predator 
is stopping us from making mistakes. Come on. First Peter 5 verse 8 says that your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Come on. When we don't have the Lord's care, That's we are left alone to be stopped mm -hmm. by the lion. Mm -hmm. Just waiting can be the devil. But saints, you don't have to be alone. And with faith, you will never be alone. I remember an old hymn that said, I must have my Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. Saints, I have a news flash for you. Be daring, for you are not walking alone. Be bold, for your God shall give you boldness. The power of the Lord is upon you. And it's now time to march. Come on. Come a few on. weeks ago, my father spoke on a message entitled, The Christian Race. On your mark, get set, go. Well, saints, it is time to go. It is time to run. We are not going alone. You don't have to run in Nikes. You don't have to run in Adidas. Because your steps are ordered in the will of the Lord. And God will take care of you. I understand that fear strikes us. Mm. I understand that fear can debilitate us. I understand that fear can mobilize us. But what you've got to understand mm. is that fear is just a fuel. Mm. Fear is nothing more than a state of mind. Mm. Fear poses no genuine threat. Fear should not cause you strength. If I may use an acronym that I believe I once heard our evangelist Jackson say, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Fear is nothing more than false evidence appearing real. And when this false evidence appears more real to us than anything else, we are hit with anxiety. Anxiety. Someone say anxiety. anxiety. Anxiety is a mental state built entirely on what ifs. My God. What if I lose my job? What if someone's at the door? What if they're outside my window? What if someone is waiting for me? What if this happens? What if that happens? All of it is built off questioning the very possibility of something that may not even be probable. But unlike the what ifs, Unlike the uncertainties, there is one absolute unquestionable fact, and that fact is Come God on. will Come take on. care Come of on. you. Come on. Mm. Saints, the other day I was walking to school in the morning on a trail through an empty park. And while I was walking, I looked to my right and saw a second shadow quickly approaching. And out of anticipation and confusion, I quickly snapped my head to the left. And by the time I, I turned, a jogging man had already gone past me. And in that situation, I realized that if that had been some other man, if that had been somebody else, I may not have been here to preach this message to you. But saints, the underlying message here is that God can turn your victim situation uh -huh. into a victory situation. Come on. Amen. God can take out the victim victimization yep. and put victory right in its place. Come on. You were once victimized, but now you're with he who was glorified. Yeah. Come on. You were Come once on. victimized, Come on. but now you're with he who was magnified. Yes. Because Come our on. Lord and Savior was crucified. Yes, yes sir. Saints, <laughs> you may be at a dying time in your life. You never, the people who you never thought would forsake you have forsaken you. You're at the end of your life. Your mother is at the end of it. Your father doesn't call you his own. You're one of the church sisters and they say, look at this brother, look at this sister. Do you know what they've done? I can't allow you in my home. You go to the church brothers and they say that I don't like your kind around me. And they shame you for all you've done. Loved ones, I can tell you that this world may forsake you and never let go of your faults. But what I have got to tell you is that there's a God who sees the best in you 
when everyone else around can only see the worst. Mm -hmm. And this God will take care of you. Come on. Somebody may feel you out. No longer keeping you in their home because they're disowning you. You're alone. You're on the street. You're homeless. But saints, let me tell you, this is not your fault. This is not your final destination. Right. For in your father's house, Man, there are many God. mansions, Come and on. you will not be left homeless Come in on. his kingdom. What kind of care are you looking forward to? What kind of care are you looking for? Don't let me just ask you this. Ask yourself, what kind of care am I looking for? Will you accept the righteous care of your father? Will you deny fear and take on faith? Will you allow this God to take care of you? I know there are some of you who may be in a dire situation. Fear has come upon you. You're overtaken. You feel like you can't go on. I'd like to pray for some of you. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, great and mighty God, we come before your throne of grace this afternoon, Lord, and we humble ourselves at your feet. Lord, we can't make it alone. Lord, we're in a dire situation. Lord, we don't know where to go or who to go to. Lord, all our resources have run out and run dry. So, Lord, I'm looking to you because I heard that you won't run out. I heard that you won't run dry. I heard that you're an everlasting God. And while everyone else lets go of me and forsakes me, you will never forsake me. You've told me that you love me. You've told me that you will take care of me. So Lord, I'm coming before you. I'm shaking. I'm afraid. I'm hurt. I don't know what to do. But Lord, I heard of you. I heard that you were with me. I heard that you were Yes. I heard that you are a heavenly father. So, Lord, I come to you. Replace the fear in my heart with yes, faith. Replace the anxiety yes, with love. Yes, Replace the fear, the misunderstanding with peace yes, and Lord. understanding. Yes, Lord. I come before you because I have nowhere else to go. Yes, Lord. And I know that you have everything to offer. So, Lord, I give myself to you now. I place my life in your hands. And I give my all to you. Since you may be in need of counseling, you may need, may need someone to talk to. And we have counselors here in both our senior pastor and our associate pastor. Our associate pastor, O'Neill Walker, his email is evg. OK Walker at hotmail.com. And his phone number is 647 274 3625. Our senior pastor's email is rev, R -E -R -E -V -J Walker at hotmail.com. And his phone number is 647 708 6641. If you've been blessed and you feel that you want to pour out a blessing yourself. We are in a bit of a financial bind, as you can say. Um, and if you would feel the need, or if you feel your spirit to pour out, then we have a, we have our e-transfer, your text side like that, at grantedtriumphant at gmail.com. We're also accepting souls. Our mailing address and our church address is 28 Western Court. We get sent. Brampton, Ontario. And our postal code is L16-4T5. We're looking to receive. And we'd love to see you in, our, in the house of the Lord. So feel free to come in. All are welcome at the Lord's table. And we're looking to hear a message, a word from our associate pastor next week. So please. Tune in for that. May God go with you and God bless you.